Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our one-on-one -on -one interview with an alum of the Rutgers Business School. A uh, really fascinating character, and you'll get to know him well during our session. His name is Amir Ismail. He currently works for Bank of America uh, as a VP and senior financial analyst. Uh, right out of school, he graduated at the end of 2014 from Rutgers. Interestingly enough, with uh, like a specialty in accounting, supply chain management, even though he's working in finance now, uh, and right out of school, he went for P went to PwC, uh, where he was a consultant. Welcome, Amir. Hello, hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So how did you end up actually like majoring in accounting and supply chain management and then ended up in a consulting job and now uh, you're in finance? Oh, yeah. Uh, so academic journeys, professional journeys, it's a long term game. And uh, when I first saw, you know, when I first started my academic journey, I thought I wanted to be a CPA. Um, and that's essentially why I started as an accounting major. Um, and through my academic journey, I started interning for PricewaterhouseCoopers. I started learning from mentors, um, and I developed this interest in becoming a problem solver in the world of management consulting, uh, project management, product ownership, uh, so on and so forth. So then I started trying to determine how do I take a degree and position myself for a career in that space? So I started in accounting, I double majored in supply chain uh, initially to get my 150 to be a CPA. And then I started learning that I can take my financial acumen and then my supply chain relationship based um, acumen and then combine that to start in a career such as management consulting. So it worked out luckily in my favor and uh, I pursued it very relentlessly uh, to, to be a management consultant. Okay, that explains it. So tell me, when you were a junior and senior in high school, did you have any idea what you wanted to do? So specifically, if I did not know. What I did know is I knew I wanted to be something in business. So what in business, whether it was accounting, finance, marketing, I wasn't essentially too sure of. So, and that's honestly another reason why I started in accounting, because I was like, I'm going to go for the hardest major there is, in my opinion, and I'm going to go for the major that's it's the, the language of business. So if yeah. I can understand accounting, I can maybe understand other facets of the business world. So with all that in mind, it, it helped me um, choose accounting as my major. And so when you were applying to college, you knew that you wanted to get into a business school. And that's, that, that is a big decision right there because, you know, most high school students really have no clue about what they really want to do. Yeah, so, and that's, that's the difficult part, right? Not knowing what you want to do at the, but what I would encourage is where do you want to start? Or where do you think you want to start? And I knew 100% I was settled on becoming uh, something with a uh, business focus. Now, why did you pick Rutgers? Oh, many reasons. So, are you a New Jersey boy? Oh, uh, yeah, I've lived in New Jersey for, for all my life. Um, okay. So, I wanted something that was close and near to home. Um, that was one of the, the primary um, initiatives there. I wanted to be close to family where I can still visit and be clo have close ties to where I grew up. Um, also, when I went to Rutgers Newark to kind of see what the campus had to offer, it was incredibly diverse. I remember reading about the diversity and the, the melting pot of cultures. And myself, I'm Venezuelan and Lebanese, so I represent two parts of the country. So I wanted to go somewhere where I can immediately make an impact and add to that culture um, and kind of, you know, the environment that Rutgers has. Um, in addition to that, it's just uh, knowing that it was the State University of, of New Jersey and that it had an incredibly large alumni base, those are all critical factors in my decision making. Um, and then, of course, all the extracurriculars that Rutgers uh, offers as part of being a student. And you were very involved there, but tell me what the highlights of the program were for you. Oh, uh, for, for, for me, the highlights of the program um, was my ability to not only um, go through the academic hurdles and, and learn the majors that I was interested in, but really getting exposed to um, extracurricular activities. So when I first started at Rutgers, I wanted to do everything and anything. So I wanted to be a part of every organization that I can get a part of. I wanted to be a part of every scholarship that I can get my hands on. Um, and I wanted to build a brand. And it was, um, it was a challenge. 
Uh, but those were one of the biggest highlights for me. It was just the amount of involvement and how much it's endorsed and actually welcomed and encouraged by administration, by staff, and even the camaraderie that you have amongst your peers. Everyone wants to kind of, you know, be, be on the leadership board or put this event together or have this fundraising effort. And I got to be a part of all that. And I'm uh, incredibly grateful for it. I like your phrase um, regarding your own personal branding. I should point out to everyone who's watching that you are also the founder of a startup, uh, which offers career uh, consulting and actually professional branding. <laughs> no surprise, surprise. I will get into that a little bit later and how the program may have helped you to actually create your company. Um, was, there, was there a particular part of the academic life at Rutgers Business School uh, that was most meaningful, you, meaningful to you? Like, did you do an immersion? Was there experiential learning? Uh, did you have a professor who you felt like could be a mentor to you? Oh, yeah. So one of the kind of standout items that I'm thankful for is I am still in contact with some of the professors that have uh, meant a good deal to me. So I actually chose, I wanted to explore the uh, world of tax accounting because of my tax professor. I wanted to understand business law because of my business law professor. I knew I didn't want to do audit because of my audit professor, but it was because they were incredibly um, approachable. I can talk to them about some of the, the career um, aspects that, in, that I wanted to go into. Um, and a lot of them served as mentors, not only as professors, but outside of that as advisors to organizational um, uh, events that I was doing. They would even offer sometimes extra credit to students that were involved outside of the classroom. Also, I, would, I will love to mention that I was a part of this international exchange program um, or international learning program where I got to visit Tanzania, Africa cool. on, on behalf of Rutgers. And it was a 10 day mission trip uh, where it was 10 students, two administration. We went out to Tanzania, East Africa, and we were planting trees. We were refurbishing, um, you know, school, uh, schools. We were, we, we donated school supplies. Um, we went to sober homes, orphanages. We were just kind of giving back to the local communities and Rutgers was the, is the institution that gave me that platform. And not only that, that was my first kind of big international trip. And because of that experience, I have traveled to 19 countries since I've graduated wow. because that program opened my eyes where I'm like, wow, the world is so much bigger than New Jersey. I need to go out and explore it. Um, so wonderful experience. And uh, I got a lot out of that program and I still talk about it to this day. Now, Amir, for someone to tell me that they were inspired by a professor to take more tax accounting courses now, that says something about your professor, I got to tell you, okay? That guy had to be an incredibly motivational individual to inspire you to be even more interested in, of all things, tax accounting. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> now, now, what did you learn beyond the business skills that you developed in the program? Oh, uh, communication, uh, executive presence, the ability to network. Uh, the ability, the understanding of not um, burning bridges and keeping close ties with everyone that you meet, uh, being respectful of other cultures, other um, opinions and positions of thought, kind of having that mutual respect where, hey, there's a lot of people that represent different parts of the world. How can we come together um, to work together on, on some of these initiatives and things that we want to do together? Um, I also, so I went to uh, Rutgers Newark, which was, you know, it felt like a small city. Yep. Um, and it was kind of a stepping stone that I needed to get into New York City because it was, it was, it gave me that urban feel um, where there were still a lot of kind of, you know, high rise buildings and, and that feel where you were entering a city and studying. And um, Rutgers is always on a growth pattern, I feel like, right, where they were always building and, and partnering and being acknowledged for many different awards and attributes. So it was always an exciting um, LM, uh, university to be a part of. And when I listened to that checklist of items that you learned beyond the business skills, what immediately impresses me is the fact that most of them uh, were the result of a business education. In other words, if you were a philosophy major, if you majored in science, if you majored in any other subject, you wouldn't be talking about how to network you wouldn't be talking about how to make an effective, thoughtful presentation uh, or collaborating with individuals because none of those skills are taught in other disciplines in an undergraduate education. 
Uh, and that's, that's my no brainer belief in the value of a business education that you really can apply to anything you do. You don't have to go into business. Uh, and then your activity, extracurricular stuff, really developed you as a person, I'm, I can see, had a big impact on you. Oh yeah, I mean, the, the extracurriculars is, I think, um, in many cases, what allowed me to, to flourish and allowed me to, to be known and allowed me to start building that personal brand. Um, and taking it with me as alumni and not and, and also keeping a close tie to the university. I've done numerous projects with them post graduation, uh, similar to, to this conversation that we're having here. And there's always been, hey, what's going on at Rutgers? Anything that I can do to support any any under undergrads that I can support or mentor. Um, so it's always been a, a, a community where we keep close ties to and the alumni. Um, there's a huge uh, pride. Uh, that comes with being from Rutgers, especially when you meet other alumni from Rutgers. It's, it, there's always this mutual, um, I want to help you. Uh, and and that, it's always, that's something that I've always appreciated very dearly. Now, uh, one of the things, obviously, that you get out of a business education is you get a job. <laughs> wow. Uh, and you got a good job. You got a job in consulting with PwC. It grew out of an internship, I believe. And I'm wondering how instrumental was a business school in lining you up for that? Oh, so actually, um, I got an internship with PwC as a sophomore in college, um, which was um, an accomplishment in, because I know it was so difficult for me to get into the door at uh, you know, some of these larger firms, especially because it's so competitive. Rutgers gave me that platform to serve as a leader that brought in these companies to come to the institution to talk about some of their opportunities that they have open. And to also provide an additional point of view on top of some of what the professors were lecturing on what it takes to compete in the real world. And because of that involvement and because of what I took uh, my knowledge in the classroom and applying it to some, in some of these networking sessions, I, got, I landed an internship with PwC, which then became three internships. So I interned there sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, my summer. And which led to that full-time offer. Um, and my initial internship was not in consulting. It was, it was a leadership development internship. And then I did a tax internship because I thought I really wanted to do tax. And then, um, and then I got my management consulting internship, which then led to that full-time job in advisory or management consulting. Wow. Now, the other thing you did is you actually created your own company. It's a coaching company. You're doing this in addition to working for Bank of America. Uh, was your education instrumental in, in your decision to create your own career coaching and professional branding firm? Absolutely. So um, my nine to five is at Bank of America and then what I call five to nine. Uh, that's at uh, AIC Mindset, which is the career coaching, personal branding, job search optimization uh, business that I started. And um, when I was at Rutgers, I had my struggles in knowing what an effective resume looked like and networking and relationship building, you know, when I first started. And then I, and I, I was in, a, in, an, in an environment where there was a lot of my peers and upperclassmen that were doing really well in these areas. So I became a steward. I became a student of some of these topics uh, where I got to learn at, in my classroom where when someone presented, I got to see in extracurricular activities what it takes to have a good brand and, and, and be someone that everyone wants to follow and, and be a part of. Um, and because of that, I became, I started emerging as a role model or peer role model at, on campus. So I started doing a lot of what I do now uh, professionally. I did it on a pro bono basis. And um, after I graduated, I saw that a lot of young professionals, even alumni, were still reaching out. Hey, can you help me out with my LinkedIn? Can you help me out with interviewing? What does it take to, to negotiate a salary? Yeah. I kept doing that um, for about a year or two after graduation. I'm like, you know what? Let me attach an LLC behind this and see what happens. And um, two years in, into business, um, I've, I've had an intern class of five this summer. I just onboarded four more interns in the fall, um, some of which are from Rutgers. You know, I have a, a, a dozens of professional clients that have hired me huge network of universities that bring me in for um, speaking opportunities and lecturing opportunities and as well as nonprofit organizations um, that also bring me in and, and Rutgers was actually instrumental to that um, because they were one of the first organizations that brought me in to do some mock interviewing for some of their students so wow. they, they, they brought me in because I, they knew how many interviews I had 
um, and they allowed me to teach that to some of their students. And um, it's, been, it's been a great opportunity. So Amir, let me bring you back a few years wow. to when you were in high school as a junior or senior. And, I, and, and looking back from the standpoint of where you are today, what's your best advice for someone who'd be in high school right now as a junior or senior, thinking about the transition to college and what it means? Oh, yeah. And I would like to introduce, and you know, I didn't mention before, but I am a first-generation college student, first-generation American. Um, so I grew up son of immigrants, grew up you know, either at the poverty line or under the poverty line. So I always had my back against the wall. Grew up with very limited resources and had to figure out a lot of what I know on my own uh, and navigate the world, you know, especially being the oldest sibling of three. So, and I say that because that is also another reason why I started my business because I started to think about what is my secret sauce? What makes me different? And the idea there is mindset determined success is what I came up with. No matter how many challenges I had, no matter how uh, against the wall, back my wall, uh, my, against the wall my back was, if I set my mind to something where I'm like, I'm going to graduate with honors, I am going to get that job at PwC, I will start my own business, I will become the vice president of so-and-so organization, that I can do it, but not only be it by be, being a dreamer, but, but in, by implementing on the ground as well. So taking an idea and then running with it and then doing something about it um, is what I would recommend. It's just mind oh, here, I got to just tell you, you don't sound like a guy from New Jersey. You sound like a Californian with that juju talk. You're manifesting your reality is what you're doing. <laughs> you got Absolutely right. So your advice to someone who's a junior or senior is to what? Imagine their future uh, and then really pour all of your energy uh, and your mind into that future to make it really happen, right? Oh, yeah. If you can dream it, uh, you can make it happen, right? Um, your mindset determines success, and your, your, your mindset is also a cap to your uh, capacity as well. So what you say you think you can do is, is essentially what you end up getting. Um, so I motivate everyone to go after their dreams. That's, uh, that's really great advice. And I want to uh, ask you one more thing in terms of you were directed because you knew you wanted to pursue a business education. But a lot of, uh, you know, young students, they really don't know for sure. And when they, when they think about business, you know, um, they tend to have a negative reaction if they don't really know what business is all about. Um, what made you comfortable with the decision that you were making that you wanted to do, do business? And I'm sure you encountered classmates in high school who said, what? What would you do in there, right? <laughs> so what, what do you say to all that? Oh, yeah. So... For me, I think um, my dad has always been a salesman. So I grew up with a business-minded father. Uh, but ironically, he wanted me to be a doctor or a lawyer or some of the other glorified degrees. And for some reason, I just had this belief and it. it just felt right to pursue business. And I wanted to work in Fortune 500. And ultimately, I wanted to start my own business. And I knew that going into business was going to position me the best for that. Um, and that, those are some of those like building blocks that allowed me to know that business was the right uh, path for me. Now, for those that might not have that you know, understanding of what they want to do, the idea here is to hypothesize, right? To pick up the phone and, and try to network with uh, folks that are doing what you think you might be interested in and pick their brain about what it is that they do day to day, see if they can shadow, especially in today's world, everything being virtually, it's, it's a little bit easier to navigate that dynamic. Um, hypothesize and figure out, is that something that I wanna do? If it's a yes, keep exploring it. If it's a no, let's figure out something else that, that you want. And oftentimes people try to bucket themselves or force themselves into a degree or a major. Think about what you're passionate about. Like, do you like video games? Okay, great. Maybe you can go work at uh, Microsoft or maybe you can work at Ubisoft. You know, take what you're really good at and then you can make a career out of that. You know, at Ubisoft or some of the other big organizations, you could find something that, that matches up, whether it's in finance or whether it's in law, whether it's in business analyst, uh, whether it's in sales. Those are some areas that you can um, uh, kind of consider as you're thinking about where to start your career. Really good advice. Amir, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Congratulations on your success so far. Um, I have no doubt at all uh, that your dad 
will rue the day that he urged you to become a lawyer or a doctor. You're going to be just fine in business. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. It's been a pleasure being here and, and representing Rutgers and, and being a part of this initiative. Um, I thank you for everything that you guys are doing as well. All right. This is John Byrne with Thoughts and Quants. You've been watching our one-on-one -on -one conversation with Amir, a uh, graduate of the Rutgers Business School, uh, who has made a really nice career for himself already, started his own company. It's at Bank of America. Uh, and you're actually in Charlotte, which is a cool place to be, I got to tell you, okay? Uh, first time out of the state of New Jersey uh, to actually work and live. Um, so good luck to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And for everyone out there, thanks for watching.